No. The answer is no. But uh, at least in my opinion. But let's get to it first. Look, I am a cheapo. <laughs> I, I wear inexpensive clothes. I drive a used, you know, Toyota. This office is one of the cheapest in the city. The the, the furniture that you see here, all the furniture here is something that they wanted to throw away. And I was like, can you give it to me instead? And they were like, yeah, sure. And so, so yeah, I am a cheap person, but I don't mind spending money for things that I find important, especially equipment. Like I have a business here. I am a lecturer and a game developer. And of course I understand that businesses have expenses expenses. I like the analogy with farmers and tractors, uh, right? So so if I didn't have a software development and lecturing business, and instead I had an agricultural business, I would be buying a tractor once in a while. And tractors, I learned today, are not, um, they, they're pretty expensive, like $50,000 for a used, but still like pretty high-end tractor, apparently. That's, that's pretty expensive. But if you want to do your job well, um, you sometimes need a tractor. And, and that tractor, you probably don't want to be too cheap about the tractor because it's something that you will be using eight hours a day at least. It needs to do all the things. It doesn't like, it needs to be reliable and stuff like this, right? So. The same way that I would be buying good tractors if I were a farmer, I don't mind spending money for equipment that lets me be a good developer, like a computer. So when I learned that there is a new machine on the market that has in some ways unprecedented computing power, I was like, I'm listening. And I'm of course talking about the new Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip. And then someone said that this thing right here is literally the best Mac ever made for programming. I was ready to investigate. Like when there is a new tractor on the market that is apparently the best for the job that I'm trying to do, then I should probably look into it. So the first thing that I did was I looked at YouTube videos, not, not the Apple event, because that's basically like a one hour long advertisement. Mac Studio is a breakthrough. M1 Ultra is the next breakthrough for Apple Silicon. Enables us to provide experiences that no one else can. But on people who are reviewing stuff and I looked at them and their benchmarks and I spent, you know, a good, I don't know, half an hour maybe or even more just kind of looking at YouTube videos getting excited and stuff like this, right? Then I realized, okay, so this is a lot of money. I should probably be a lot more analytical. And so th this basically video is about my process of thinking about it in an analytical sense and um, how I went about it. In the end, I realized that the Mac Studio with the Ultra chip is not worth it. Uh, definitely not for me. And I would wager that not for most developers out there. And then I was like, did I just spend four hours of my day trying to get to this conclusion and like making spreadsheets and watching videos and doing benchmarks? <laughs> and so, so I realized, okay, what I'll do is I'll spend another four hours at least probably making a video about it. <laughs> just like and subscribe, okay? First, let's talk about why even choose a Mac at all for software development. And I'm not trying to persuade any, anyone about anything. And I realize that this is a topic for more than like a single video even, uh, let alone just a part of a video. But I just want to dispel the myth that Macs are used only because of marketing, because only because of the shininess of, of this thing. That's not true. To be honest, this myth is not completely unfounded, right? Apple spends a ton of money for marketing and they are known for bending the facts in order to tell the narrative that, you know, Apple products are 
best at everything and they were the first to do everything and they are like super innovative and, and stuff like this, which is not always the truth. It does make sense to be very wary of anything that Apple is trying to sell you. But I have a very real comparison here. About three years ago, I needed to buy a new development computer for personal use. I used, you know, I was employed at Google, so obviously I had no trouble having a, a development uh, computer for work. But for personal use, I didn't have anything. And I, and I decided to go for a Windows slash Linux laptop. And I also decided to go for the top of the line of, of those things, right? So I spent a lot of money. Uh, but my, um, my Windows slash Linux laptop is almost two times more expensive than my current MacBook. Um, so it's not like I hate it when sometimes people compare, you know, a $800 Windows laptop with a $2,000 Mac, uh, MacBook Pro, and they're like, oh, the MacBook Pro has a better finish or whatever. <laughs> this just doesn't make any sense. Um, but but like this is the opposite. Like the the Linux slash Windows machine is much more expensive than the than the MacBook, and yet I here we are, I'm using the MacBook for everything, for, for development, for uh, video editing work, for graphics work, for everything. I was very motivated to switch to Linux slash Windows and it just didn't work. One reason for this is that the lowly MacBook works faster and it's, it shouldn't, right? And by sheer power, it should be slower, but for Almost anything that matters, the MacBook works faster than the, the laptop, the Windows slash Linux laptop. I think I'll show you some benchmarks later that show even the my Windows slash Linux laptop um, so that you can compare what I see in, in normal life. There are of course some unfair reasons too. For example, the, it is not Linux's fault that there are no good graphical um, design suits on Linux, at least in my opinion, right? And I am a game developer, so so I do need to uh, sometimes work on graphics. I also sometimes need to work on music and sound uh, and stuff like this. These all are much better on MacBook than on a Linux or a Windows machine. In, again, in my opinion. Look, I, I want to stress that this is not an attack on anyone's choices. I'm not really trying to persuade anyone that they should switch to Mac or whatever it is. It has a lot of issues as well. I'm just trying to dispel the myth that uh, the only reason why developers, um, especially in the recent years, switch to Mac is because of marketing or is because of shininess. It's it's not true. Okay, back to the Mac Studio with the Ultra chip. At first I was really impressed, I have to admit. Um, I looked at the benchmarks and I started putting them into the spreadsheet and they mostly looked amazing. Like everything was faster, some things were much faster, like two times faster than the top of the line that is currently the case. So I was very like, oh, okay, so th this, this might be a thing. I might actually be buying this, whoa. But then I noticed one thing. There were benchmarks where the Mac Studio completely killed. Like, as I said, some benchmarks two times faster than the top of the line up till today, right? And then there were ones that were still often faster, but not by much, and sometimes almost by nothing. And the, and the ones where Mac Studio Ultra killed was things like very parallelizable um, things like ray tracing or sometimes, um, you know, export of video and stuff like this. Um, and the ones where it didn't completely kill were things that were more like in my, you know, things like, like for example, Xcode export, 
or um, uh, or, but even just some like you know export of of video, but like a normal video and not the perfect thing that could be exported from the Mac Studio Ultra, right? Um, so yes, the benchmarks were always very impressive, uh, but the really really impressive ones, the ones that would blow your mind, uh, were very specific for like long running batch jobs. Um, that you ideally want on some server somewhere and the ones that were only well impressive still but not mind-blowing uh, were the ones that you would expect from a computer uh, to to use the, the the one that you use every day um, so this is the problem with benchmark versus real-world use right benchmark for them to be uh, like a, a single meaningful number, they need to do something that's long running, sustained performance, something like a big export or the ray tracer running for a whole like video or something, you know, and then that makes complete sense. And then for that, they are great. But real world use most of the time you're not using your computer as in like you're just watching a render render things you are you are writing code and like hot reloading or even sometimes recompiling but things generally 99 percent of the time um you're not using your multi-core processor on 100 percent the best benchmark that i found that kind of gives you an idea of how fast a computer works, how fast it is in these day-to-day, minute-to-minute tasks, is Speedometer. Speedometer basically runs a bunch of web apps in quick succession. And so it it shows how, um, how the computer responds to single core use, because JavaScript is single core mostly, uh, it also shows how it works in multi-core use because the browser is generally using many cores. Um, and then it also uses the GPU because browsers use GPU to render stuff. Uh, but more importantly, it's about the kind of like it loads the app and immediately runs it and does a b bunch of things, but it's, it's not a sustained performance it's not rendering anything or building anything it's it's just like quick uh, very fast things to run right so it's closer to how how normal use of your computer feels like when you're using it in many ways it's close to how you use an ide when you're typing that most of the time of course your computer is idle just waiting for your input but then you type a new character and then oftentimes it needs to like reparse uh, which is a single core like reparsing a file is a single core um, computation and uh, but then it also sometimes needs to analyze more than just that one file it needs to run an analyzer on like maybe your whole project or a big chunk of it which is something between single core and multi core um, and uh, also it needs to update the the ui of course so that's that's gpu these kinds of things right and you want to know how your computer will respond when typing that kind of code to see if this kind of workload writing code will be snappy and fast you can just look at technical specifications and see like you know the the processor speed or anything like that there are other things in the layout of the computer that are more important for example access to memory like the how fast can the computer the cpu access ram and you can just look at the maximum theoretical speed it, there's more things at play so the speed could be half of that in in real life so that's why if you look at speedometer benchmarks you'll see that Mac Studio Ultra isn't killing it it's it's not that much better than my old Mac uh, and it's almost no better 
than a recent MacBook Pro with the max, uh, basically half of the cores. Um, it's not just, you just can't for this kind of workload use all these cores, all this extra power. This also goes back to my expensive Windows and Linux laptop. It has a speedometer score of 73 versus my MacBook Pro uh, that has 183. And it really feels like that when you, when you use those computers, the MacBook, even though it shouldn't by technical specification, it feels much faster, um, especially when like browsing the web. And I, it's, at first I thought that it's just my imagination, uh, but it's not, it's, it's, really, it's really faster. So, okay, so my MacBook, my current MacBook has 183. My, uh, so if you look at the Mac Studio Ultra, it has 292, so a lot faster. But again, at this point, does it really make sense? It's not a linearal, linearly perceivable scale, right? At this point, like I'm very happy about the responsiveness of my computer. So not a big deal, but also if you compare the Ultra, the Studio Ultra to um, the MacBook Pro that is cheaper and older and has half the cores and half almost everything, they have the same score. They have two, 293 speedometer score. So really at this point, it's overkill. But speedometer score is about how fast, how snappy it is to use your computer. But software development is also about building, about compilation, about long running batch tasks, right? True, but it depends. Most of us software developers use some kind of a, a, a shortened build, a shortened compilation than what was common like in the 90s, right? I am a software developer using Flutter and Flutter has hot reload, which means I make a change, I hit save and under a second, even with this computer, under a second I have that change uh, compiled and put into my running app, uh, which means I hit save, I switch tabs to the app or game and it's already there. So if something gives me like a hundred millisecond faster compile time for hot reload, it doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't. And it's not just Flutter, of course. These days, even if you don't have something like hot reload or hot restart, you have at least some like part compilation that lets you build or at least try your app or game and in, at some level, maybe just a part of it, but without compiling the whole massive thing at once. And then there are the times where you have to build everything at once, right? Like for example, I need to profile my app so that I can see how it behaves when it's like fully compiled in profile mode. Um, so I do that and that takes time. It could take uh, a several seconds, often half a minute, minute, for a really big project, it could take several minutes or even tens of minutes, right? Uh, but it's not like a ray tracing job. It's not going to completely halt my progress. I'm not just looking at the terminal as my app or game is building. I am doing other stuff because the building itself is actually just using maybe, I don't know, half of the resources that the computer can give it. And so the rest of the computer is is for me to, to, to keep working. A good developer starts the compilation, starts the build process and goes do something else. Even if it's something else is, you know, getting some coffee, <laughs> but you don't just stare at the terminal. And with that, we should be looking at the time difference between the different devices, right? So my device takes 130 seconds uh, to build something in Xcode, right? I found a benchmark and that, that's what it says. 130 seconds for my device. The Mac Studio Ultra 
uh, takes 67 seconds only. So that's half as much, which is great, right? So th this is fantastic. But again, you're doing something else um, at the time. You're not just staring at the screen. You're not doing this every minute or every hour. You're doing it, I, I think, at least in my case, I'm definitely not doing a big build every hour. Um, and it's, it's just not like, it doesn't correspond to the power of, of Mac Studio Ultra. Mac Studio Ultra in long running benchmarks completely destroys my computer here. Like it's, it's four times, five times faster to, you know, export video uh, in, again in very, very specific circumstances or uh, to render a 3D object. But in Xcode, is, it is only uh, half, uh, I mean, twice as fast. Um, and again, you're doing something else while, while it's fast. So does it really matter? And here I'm comparing my pretty lowly 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2020. If you compare to something like the newer 16 inch MacBook Pro uh, with the Max chip, not the Ultra of course, but the Max chip, it's still slower than the Mac Studio Ultra, but not by much. It's, it's I think it takes 93 seconds versus 67 seconds. Um, and again, this is something that happens in the background, so not, not a big deal. Plus, I should point out that this is an Xcode benchmark, right? This is designed to, to push the limits and to like give the computer as much work as possible in a limited amount of time. So it's a benchmark. If we were comparing a build uh, that needs to do more than just like exercise the CPU, but an actual just Xcode build or Android Studio build, the differences will, would be even lower because a build often does things that are not uh, CPU bound. It's like it goes to the network and stuff like this. So so it's really the, the, the difference there is not that big. So here we are. If you look at the Cinebench benchmarks and all the other like Geekbench benchmarks and stuff like this, and look at the scores of my current computer, for example, and this beast, the Mac Studio Ultra, you would be like, of course, this is such a great uh, investment. Like you, you are spending a significant amount of money, but you're getting three times as much value from this as from that other thing. So of course, uh, but uh, now you're we're realizing that the real world benchmarks and the real world value that you can get from this is much lower than what the benchmarks might suggest. And I'm not even talking about the fact that most people these days, if they build stuff, like if they build code, so they need a like, significant amount of compute, they will probably do it in the cloud using some CI CD service. For example, I use CodeMagic, which means that I only, if I want a release build, I commit my code, tag it with something and send it to, um, to, to GitHub. And then something else will pick it up on, in my case, CodeMagic CI CD pipeline will pick it up and they will use their computers to build everything. And I don't even need to care about it. And then I get an email, right? For them, for CodeMagic, it might make sense to buy a beast like this and then sell it as a premium service for their customers. Um, so for example, let's say that your build times improve by five to 10% in the next five to 10 years. Like, like every build that you do from now on in a CI CD pipeline is five to 10% faster. How much money would you give for that opportunity? Would it be $5,800? Not for me, for some bigger studio, sure. For a big company, pff, no, no problem. But for, for a solo dev or for a small studio, I don't think you would, you, you would go for that. And of course, then we have the thing that Mac Studio is just a box. You don't get a monitor, you don't get you know keyboard and mouse. And that's 
so that's additional things that you need to buy but that's not the real issue here the fact is just that laptops are better i i've many times before i thought about oh, okay maybe i will buy a big like box that sits under my desk but it always gets completely steamrolled by the fact that laptops are portable and you can use them anywhere and i often do i will take my laptop from this office and i go somewhere and i i, I have everything in it so i can keep programming the builds that i have there are there uh, i don't need to think about synchronizing stuff um, i can work if i have like half an hour at home i can keep writing of course i have a small screen so it's not great but the writing code if you only if you know what you're writing and you writing code you can do it uh, whereas if you have a mac studio somewhere you're not going to lug it around it's going to be there and if there's a specific environment there that you have set up um, you will have to duplicate it anywhere else that you need to work from for me having one single computer even in this world of cloud is so much value like i can do everything from here and i can take it on a train i can take and i can work from home i can work when meeting someone before uh, i i see them it's just mind-blowingly powerful to have a full computer including screen and mouse and keyboard in one package that i can put into my backpack so yeah Mac Studio Ultra is not worth it for software developers, especially not for like solo software developers or smaller studios. If you want an upgrade, then I would suggest get the MacBook Pro uh, 16 inch or 14 inch or whatever with the Max chip, which is basically the same performance in, for most purposes. Uh, it is cheaper than the mac studio it is and it's portable it's a laptop i like how Marx brownlee concluded his review of mac studio ultra uh, and he was looking at it from the perspective of video editing this thing is overkill <laughs> and i love that that's the narrative around this computer like do you really need that much power probably not see you don't need it i hope i saved you some time and don't forget that if you want to save more time, I have a Udemy course on how to use Android Studio shortcuts to be better and faster at programming. Doesn't require a better computer. And uh, that's it from me. See you around.